Across Ireland, on average, 40% of elderly people over the age of 80 live alone. For these individuals, many are isolated and can no longer care for themselves. 89-year-old Eileen Conmey tells us about her life today. She is now fully dependent on her daughter to care for her. My name is Eileen. I'll be 90 years old next month. I live in my daughter's house. I have been living here for three years. My daughter Mary looks after me. I get my meals from Mary also. She gives me a shower once a week, washes my clothes, irons. I can't walk for too long. I get around in my wheelchair. I don't go out of the house very much because I wouldn't be able to keep walking. I get tired very quickly. I don't have to do much to be tired. I used to be able to make my own breakfast, but I can't do that anymore. Eileen's daughter, Mary Gotten, gave us an insight into her daily life as a full-time carer. My name is Mary and I care for my mother who will be 90 years old next month. I've been caring for my mother now for just over three years. She came to live with me at that stage. She was living in her own home place with her son but um, as she was getting older and more frail, she was having falls and she ended up in hospital. And we could see then that she wouldn't be able to go back to living, like just caring for herself, even with her son in the house. She needed extra care. So we decided that she'd come and live with me then. I was working full time at a full time job, so I took two years off to, um, it's called carers leave and I got carers benefit and I work just a day and a half a week. Um, caring is a difficult job, it, you're tied down to your house, your home a lot and you have to make arrangements no matter where you want to go. And I am very fortunate that I do have a very good husband who is very helpful and my son lives here and he's also very helpful. But I think people who wouldn't have that kind of backup, it must be really difficult for them. I do probably everything for her. Um, I have to cook all her meals and she can't really walk except with a frame and someone walking beside her. So she doesn't walk much. So all her meals have to be handed to her. Luckily, so far, she can still, you know, she can manage to eat herself. And, but her balance is very bad. So if she was to get up from a chair to do something, you know, to get a glass of water, she could fall. So you have to always be there to make sure she doesn't do that or that it's supervised when she's doing it. When she came to live with me, she was you know, much more mobile than she is now and she could dress herself, sometimes herself. And mentally, she was a lot better as well. She could do things like jigsaw puzzles, you know, with some help. But in the three years, she has deteriorated to the extent that she would could not dress herself anymore and she's also got she was becoming very forgetful and just recently we've got um, a diagnosis of alzheimer's and that is a difficult thing because you know it's going to progress and down the road things are going to get more difficult not easier we met with Anne Dempsey from Third Age Ireland to find out what all of us as individuals can do to help. 
terms of helping people who are lonely, I suppose one of the first things that occurs to me would be that phrase, random acts of kindness. That there's a lot of little things I think we can do which, aren't, which can make a difference to somebody who's on their own, like perhaps r giving them a phone call, like knocking on the door, telling them you're going shopping, do they want anything? I suppose the other side of that is that I think it, it behoves sometimes a person on their own to be available and reachable. And if somebody phones and said, look, I was just wondering how you are dropping in, that you might be able to receive that and be open to it. Because I think some people are on their own. It's hard for them then sometimes to reach out. You become used to your own space and you become maybe shy. And that's a difficulty as well. So it's a two way street in some ways. We can all make a difference by simply visiting someone we know who is isolated or alone. The older generation have great stories to share. 88-year-old Margaret Downey is one of them. In 1939, the war started. I would have been just going to secondary school at that stage. It was cruel. That was my childhood. 11 years in boarding school. I swore I would never send a child to boarding school. My first house was in Leicester in England. Oh, it was deadly. And when I look back at it, the poor woman was sick, but she did a very nasty thing. I told her I was expecting and I was looking for another place. Oh no, she said, don't. I, it was a share. I love a baby in the house. Because the baby bawled her head off, so she gave me 24 hours to quit the house.